So roses, like this gorgeous one here, are one of my favourite flowers. So it's only right that we'd want to create them out of soap, isn't it? I'm stuck to it. I'm stuck to it. It's got me. Hey everyone and welcome back to our channel. I'm Anne from the Sussex Handmade Soap Company and along with my friend Wayne we run this channel and we also run a handmade bath and body business down in Battle in East Sussex. Today we are going to be showing you how we make our soap dough roses. Roses are one of my favourite flowers. I've got this beautiful little pink one here if I can just gently pull it round to show you. It's starting to die off just a little bit but I love the colour of roses, I love the smell of roses. This rose in particular is really special because it was the last gift my dad gave me before he died. So this is lugged everywhere with me. When I move, I lug this rose with me. And it's been with me for four or five years now, four years. Um, so yeah, we're going to be inspired by roses today and we are going to use some soap dough. And we're just gonna show you how we make a classic pink English rose using soap dough. So to make our roses today, we just need a few tools. The first is this leaf veiner here, a rose leaf veiner that I purchased from Amazon, and this just helps the petals to look a little bit more realistic. We are also going to need this little ball tool. It's just a cheap cake decorating tool, again from Amazon. We'll be using both ends of this today. Next, we have got two little rose petal leaf cutters. These again were from Amazon. It was a set of nine and I am using the two smallest petals. We have also got some red slash pink colored soap dough that I have created earlier and a rolling pin. So that is what we need today. So the first thing we're gonna do is dust our board with some kaolin clay and this is just going to help prevent our soap dough from sticking because soap dough can be very sticky when you are trying to roll it out, as you will see in just a moment. So I am now going to try and roll out our soap dough and when you are just starting it off, it does take a while to kind of get going. So there is a lot of picking it up, turning it around and unpeeling it from the rolling pin. Once you have got it going, it's not too bad. And we want to roll it out to about two millimeters in thickness today. Once it is rolled out, we are going to start with our smallest rose petal cutter. And for today's rose, we are going to need nine individual petals. So I'm just stamping out our nine petals now, staying nice and close to the edge of the uh, soap dough so that I can get as many as possible out of one piece of rolled soap dough. Once we've done our nine small petals, we move on to our larger petal cutter and we need five of the larger petals today. So again, just pressing them out and staying close to the edge of the soap dough. Now we have got all of our petals, we need to take our little ball tool and I'm just going to use the ball tool to sort of slightly flatten the, and thin the edges of each leaf. It doesn't make a huge difference, but it just helps them feel a little bit more delicate and a little bit more like those lovely kind of paper thin rose petals that you get. And I'm going to do this to every single one of the leaves, all of the small ones and all of the big ones. Normally I do actually do this on the board, but I'm holding it up today just so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Definitely a bit more fiddly holding them like this and doing them this way, but um, I get them done. <laughs> Just finishing off the last of the large petals now. And that 
is all of our petals completed. Now we are moving on to actually adding the um, detail to the petals using the leaf veiner. And it's a two piece silicon mould sort of thing. We place our petal onto the mould and I press really firmly down. And as you can see, it has left an imprint on the surface of the petal. So, petal down onto the mould, top goes on, pressing down nice and firmly, and then releasing to show the detailed petal. And again, they're just a little bit more realistic this way. I'm going to continue doing all of the petals now and here they are all completed. Now we're taking the other end of this little ball tool and we are just folding random edges of each rose petal over the end of this ball tool and again this is all just to create um, more of a realistic rose just to make them look a bit more like a rose that you would see outside in nature. So there's no kind of specific way to do this, just do it a little bit random because roses and rose petals are a little bit random in design. Moving on to the larger ones. I do curl the larger ones over the tool a little bit more than the smaller ones just so that when the rose has been made they are fanning out a little bit more and give that illusion of the rose opening up and kind of blooming. There we go. Rose petals completed. And now we need to build the actual rose. To do that we are taking a little pea size ball of soap dough a small pea, <laughs> and we are just rolling it into a cone shape. And this is going to be the kind of centre of our rose. And once we have created our cone, we're going to begin construction of our rose. And to do that, we're going to need some distilled water. I am using distilled because the soap has already gone through saponification, so we're going to want to use distilled water here. And I just take some water and using a little makeup brush, I brush the water onto the first petal. Then I line up the cone with the pointed base of the rose petal. And then I carefully fold the edges around until it meets itself in the middle and that's, this gives us our central rose bud. So once we've created the central bud we're going to move on to building the rose. We're going to take three small rose petals, we're going to brush these all with distilled water which is going to act like a glue, it's going to stick really nice and firm when it has dried. I should note that this makeup brush is only used for soap. I don't use it to uh, apply my eyeshadow or anything after I'm done. It is solely a soap makeup brush. And to attach the petals to the central bud, we are going to take hold of the bud and we are going to find that join where that petal has been uh, wrapped around. And we are going to place that onto the first rose petal. I'm sticking it firmly on one side and I'm leaving the other side slightly open. I then take the second petal and slip it just inside the first one. So we've got them just like this. And then we're starting to slowly wrap around, but again leaving that second petal with the outer edge open so we can slip inside the third petal. When we have got all three petals attached like this, we're going to wrap around the rose. And this can be a bit fiddly because although the water dries really nice and firm, it does slip about a bit while you're actually creating. <laughs> right, there we go. The first three petals are on. The next thing we're going to do is attach the next five small petals. 
and we are again brushing with the distilled water but this time we're only brushing the lower third of the petal because we don't want the petals to be uh, quite so upright we want them to fan out a little bit to give the illusion of that rose opening up so I'm doing yeah roughly the bottom third of the petals now with the distilled water and now it's going to be a case of doing what we've just done but with the next five petals so we find a join we then place the petal against the edge, squeezing firmly on one side of the petal and leaving the other side open so we can slip in petal number two. Then we move on to petal number three and slip that one just on the inside of petal number two. And you can see we're just kind of building it up here. I'm slowly sort of turning the rows and pressing the petals in as I go. Petal number four sits next to petal number three and we're going to finish with petal number five and we're then going to wrap all the petals around and squeeze them nice and firmly at the base so that they hopefully stick nice and firm. And that is all of our small petals attached to our rows now. Finally we're going to move on to our larger petals and again just brushing the lower third of the petals with the water because we don't want them to stick all the way up. These roses need to bloom and open up just like a real rose would in the garden. And as before, we are now going to attach the larger petals in the same way. And this is fiddly and they will sort of slip and slide around a little bit. That water, like I said, although it sticks nice and firm, when it is still wet, it does, it's soap, it does go slippery. So you might find the old petal slips out of place or you have to reattach things and you'll probably say a few swear words if you're anything like me, but with a little bit of practice, you can get the hang of it relatively easily. So again, we are just slipping the petals one inside the other and then folding them around the central rows. Onto petal number four, next to petal number three. Squeezing and twisting. <laughs> and then the final petal gets attached now. And we complete the rows by pulling that final petal round to meet the first one. And that gives us our rows. And then when you've got your rows nice and firmly attached and all stuck together, you can start just kind of adjusting it a little bit if you want to. So if there's any petals that you want to fan out a little bit and make kind of bloom a little bit more, you can do. I tend to sort of just gently pull mine out a little bit just to make it look like it is blooming. And that is our pink soap dough rose. And you can do the roses in plenty of different colours as well. I've got a few here. This one here, this little white one, I love. It is a slightly larger rose. We had slightly thicker soap dough, about 3mm for this one. And when I squash that in the veiner, that is what makes these petals on the white one larger than on this smaller pink one. So just a slightly thicker soap dough does give you larger petals. Also got this little pale lilac one and I think they make really pretty decorations for the tops of soap. They're a little bit of a pain to make when you're first doing them, but they are really effective and they look so pretty when you do get the hang of it and can make a nice little collection of them all together. So once you've got the hang of it and you've created a few roses, you can then just leave them to dry for a couple of days till they are nicely stuck together and then you can use them to decorate the top of cold processed soaps. And I have used ours to decorate this soap. I have done pink and white roses and I've added on some green soap dough leaves as well and I think that looks really, really pretty. I'm so happy with how this particular soap turned out and it really is just the roses that have made the impact on this soap. So if you enjoy our videos, please do give us a like, hit that subscribe button and leave us a comment and we will see you next time. 
for some more soapy fun. Bye for now.